Hey everyone, this lesson is on the insulin signaling pathway and its regulation of the AKT pathway. So to begin, insulin will bind to the insulin receptor on a cell that has an insulin receptor. So what happens is there's an autophosphorylation mechanism that takes place when insulin binds to the insulin receptor. Once the insulin receptor autophosphorylates, what happens is it actually will phosphorylate insulin receptor substrate 1 and 2, or IRS 1 and 2. Now, this step in the pathway is actually uh, inhibited by P10. So P10 will actually dephosphorylate IRS 1 and 2. Now, what happens when IRS 1 and 2 are actually phosphorylated? They will recruit P85 and PI3K to itself. And in doing so, PI3K becomes active and will actually phosphorylate PIP2 or phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate into PIP3 or phosphatidyl inositol triphosphate. So because this PI3K mechanism is occurring, it's converting P or PIP2 to PIP3, PIP3 will actually accumulate in concentration within the cell. Now, P10 will also inhibit this process as well. So P10 will actually dephosphorylate PIP3 back to PIP2. So P10 regulates two steps in this mechanism or this pathway, will dephosphorylate IRS1 and 2 and dephosphorylate PIP3 back to PIP2. But nonetheless, if there is no P10 around and PIP3 increases in concentration, it will recruit pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase 1 or PDK1 and AKT toward the um, cell membrane. When they get there, PDK1 will actually phosphorylate AKT and the phosphorylation by PDK1 on AKT is actually at the site of threonine 308. This is very important to remember. PDK1 phosphorylates AKT at residue or at threonine 308. Now, PDK will also, via a couple of steps, will activate mTOR complex 2. And mTOR complex 2 will itself phosphorylate AKT as well. So mTOR complex 2 will actually phosphorylate AKT at serine 473. So those are the two important phosphorylation sites that I want you to remember from this lesson on AKT. With regards to insulin signaling, PDK1 will phosphorylate AKT at threonine 308 and indirectly the um, PDK1 will lead to mTOR complex 2, which will itself phosphorylate AKT at serine 473. So those are the two sites I want to remember, threonine 308 and serine 473. Now, 473 uh, phosphorylation site will, is actually regulated by PHLPP, and the threonine 308 site is actually regulated by uh, protein phosphatase 2A. So both of these, PHLPP and PP2A, will dephosphorylate these sites. So with regards to PHLPP, it will dephosphorylate the serine 473 site, and protein phosph phosphatase 2A will dephosphorylate the threonine 308 site. So there are counterbalances in this pathway. Now in an insulin stimulated cell, there are a reservoir of vesicles within the cell that contain glucose transporter 4 or GLUT4 and what generally happens when there is no insulin around, when this pathway is not activated, the translocation of these vesicles is inhibited by AS160. However, when AKT is activated, AKT will actually inhibit AS160 through phosphorylation which will basically inhibit the inhibitor. So if you were to inhibit something that's inhibiting translocation, that essentially means translocation is going to happen. So what happens is vesicles containing GLUT4 will reach the cell membrane. GLUT4 will be placed within the cell membrane 
allowing glucose to enter the cell and undergo glycolysis. So that's important to recognize. In order for us to have glucose uptake in an insulin-stimulated cell, we need AKT to be turned on. And that happens through phosphorylation at 308 and serine-473 via the mechanisms we just talked about. Now, AKT has many different downstream effects, but one that I want you to just uh, focus on with regards to the insulin signaling pathway is its regulation of the mTOR complex 1 pathway. And so how does that happen? Well, AKT will inhibit an inhibitor, and that inhibitor is tuberous sclerosis complex 2, or TSC2. Generally, without AKT being around, TSC2 will inhibit REB, or R-H-E-B, which is an activator of mTOR complex 1. So when AKT is not around, when it's not activated, TSC2 will keep mTOR complex 1 inhibited. However, again, when AKT is activated, it inhibits the inhibitor, so it inhibits TSC2, which leads to the activation of mTOR complex 1, and then mTOR complex 1 can have its downstream effects via PS, uh, P70S6K and a variety of other targets. When P70S6K is activated by mTOR complex 1, it itself will have a negative feedback regulation of the insulin signaling pathway, which means that we get an in, uh, inhibitory phosphorylation of IRS1 and 2, which essentially turns this pathway off. So that's why it's important to recognize the mTOR complex 1 pathway mechanism involved in this pathway. It is essentially the negative feedback uh, regulator of the pathway. So AKT is, again, very important in this pathway. It's regulated by a couple of different uh, steps in the pathway, PDK1 and through mTOR complex 2, and at two different uh, residues, 3-anine, 3 8 and serine-473, very important to remember. And then AKT will itself lead to glucose uptake and will eventually, through its activation of the mTOR complex 1 pathway, will eventually turn off the insulin signaling pathway. So in a sense, the insulin signaling pathway regulates the AKT pathway, but the AKT pathway eventually leads to a regulation of the insulin signaling pathway. So if you want to learn more about the insulin signaling pathway, please check out my insulin signaling pathway lesson for more information. And if you want to learn more about the AKT signaling pathway or the mTOR complex um, 1 and 2 pathways, please check out my other lessons on those topics as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.